Hi, okay, so basically for this one, so these parents want to uh, provide $50,000 at each of their 18, 19, 20, and 21st birthdays, okay? Uh, they plan to contribute X at each of their daughter's 1 to 17th birthdays to fund the four fifty thousand withdrawals. They anticipate earning a 5% annual effective interest rate on their contributions. Let's... Uh, be equal uh, one over 1.05. Uh, determine which of the following equations of value can be used to calculate x. Okay, so let's write out this time diagram, okay? So we know that at birthdays 21, 20, 19, and 18, they want to give out 50K to fund their education, right? So 50K, 50K for all, right? And then they also plan to contribute X throughout from the first birthday to the 17th birthday. So we could fund those withdrawals, correct? So now when we're now we want to find out how much they did contribute in each of these years. So this timeline has two parts of the equation that we could set equal to each other to find x. Since we want to, since they want to contribute x, this is going to be a future value concept. It's not a payment. It's a fund that they want to consider to pay out the 50k later on. So what we're going to do is that we're going to take the payment of x. Uh, future value, uh, birthdays 1 to 17, right, at a constant effective of 5%, right? Now, then we see here that there's 18, 19, 20, 21. We sent time 17 as a comparison date to find the present value of these uh, withdrawals. So we're going to do uh, the 50,000, right? Uh, there's four years, right? So there's at five percent. So if we were to set these uh values equal to each other, uh, we would uh find the answer to get x, right? But it's in the um format in of these. Okay, so let's look through all of these. Um. Okay, so it says that they anticipate earning a constant 5% annual effective interest rate. So that is why we put 5% in the future value thing. Um, so in comparison with, well, first of all, I think we should get rid of these because we're not discounting each of these birthdays all the way to zero. We're kind of dividing this timeline into two parts to create an equation. And we're setting t equals 17 as the comparison date for this part. So we're not discounting it back by like so many years to zero so e is out then we have uh we see that 1.05 is left out in this situation but we know that uh our fund is earning a constant five percent annual effective interest rate so why would they leave that out I mean, they would have to earn some sort of effective interest rate to pay out the, the 50000 So I'm going to take this one out. Another thing is, is that there are birthdays 1 to 17, right? So if I were to calculate the amount of payments between that time interval, it would be 17 minus 1, which is 16, plus 1, which is 17, because it's inclusive. So 16, the one with 16 is out because there are 17 payments. Now, another thing here is that we could see that for K, this denotes that payments are starting at zero. The question never explicitly said that payments would occur at the beginning of every birthday. So um, my guess is that D is the final answer for this scenario.